Hey squids! You may recall one of our previous videos, How to Be a Good Teammate, which illustrated the basics when playing as a team. Well this time, we'll be taking it a bit further for the more competitive squids, How to Be a Good Squad. So for those that are looking to form a squad and compete, this is for you. To start off, when forming a good dynamic team, the first thing you want to consider is team formation. What are the roles for each member on each mode on any given map? The general positions for any mode could be offensive slash bladder, support slash inker, and defensive, which can be determined by the weapons each member selects and how they utilize them. The offensive position is usually a player who focuses on picking off the opposing team and is responsible for initiating pushes, hence the splatter, usually running weapons with a good damage output and a quick time to kill, like the 52 gal or tent attack splatter shot. The support position is a player that assists the offensive push by pressuring opponents mid-range while also focusing on inking and map control, making sure there's enough ink on the ground to make a push successful, usually running weapons with a good fire rate and use of zoning, like the duel or jet squelchers. Defensive mainly focuses on securing mid and your side of the map to prevent the opposing team from breaking through or capping the point, usually running weapons with a longer range like a charger or a 96 gal. These are just a few examples. Having a range of weapons for a variety of situations will serve your team as well. Of course, teammates can alternate strategies as you switch maps and modes, but as long as there's an established role for each member, the objectives become clear. Keep in mind that you also want to think about your weapon's kit and your gear when taking a position in a match. Your weapon decisions and strategies should also be influenced by the opposing team's formation. Learning multiple weapons comes in handy when wanting to counter a problematic opponent, like running splash walls to counter a blaster player, or counter a dynamo with a charger. The next thing you want to consider for any good squad is communication. As we talked about in our communication and callouts video, communicating effectively with your team can really give you the advantage in battle. Although some teams choose not to communicate, we recommend it if you can. If you do talk using programs like Skype or Discord, then here are just a few ways to make your team speak more effectively. When you encounter an enemy inkling, be sure to call out the enemy's position before you engage. This is very important because in case you lose the firefight, you can just update your teammates quickly to their whereabouts, making it less likely that they'll get splatted by the same inkling. Also, address each opposing player by their weapon and then their location. So for example, upon encountering a 96 gal deco, you would say 96 deco in right lane, which alerts your team to which weapon is in the area. If you win the firefight, you'd quickly say 96 deco down, so that teammates can know that they don't need to worry about said weapon for a time. This becomes much more vital for weapons such as chargers, since they place a lot of pressure over key positions, so establishing that a specific weapon is down allows for your team to know where they may traverse. Always call out if you have a special, for example, Inksuka ready, and hold it for your team since it allows an opportunity to coordinate it with team members. For example, on Port Mackerel, you can trap enemies in the narrow lanes by coordinating two effective killer whales, or coordinating a kraken to push the rainmaker. Teammates should also call out opponent specials, indicated by their fancy hairdo, and let your team know what kind of special to expect. Always pay attention to the squid counter up top. This helps determine what you should be doing at any given time. Don't be afraid to call out whether it's a 2-2 or 3-1 situation, etc. With the first number representing your team and the second number being the opposing team. This should be the factor whether you push or pull back. If it's a 3-1 for example, and your team has map control, then it's the perfect time to get some distance with the tower. And if you manage to take out the entire enemy team, then you successfully pulled off a wipe. And that's a free, uncontested push with a tower or rainmaker. Lastly on communication, you should always communicate if you plan on super jumping to a teammate. Usually, super jumping isn't a good strategy when playing competitively. It may seem safe at first, but once you randomly super jump, the situation can quickly change to an unfavorable one. The indicating circle may end up compromising your teammate's position, leading to their untimely splat, and it may also result in getting splatted yourself. How many times have you super jumped to find a waiting opponent shooting at you? One of the only viable ways to super jump to a teammate is if said teammate pulls back for you and establishes that they are safe. We call this consenting super jumps. No consent, no super jump. Be sure to watch our video on communication and callouts for more info on team communication. Now that you have a full roster of well-equipped and organized teammates, it's time to put your squad to the test in competitive battle. This way you'll see if your team can implement all that newfound strategy in a match. But before that, here are some last tips. Don't crowd together. 
No one should be huddled in the same position since that will leave you vulnerable to a special or a roller flick. But you also don't want to be too separated and get picked off one by one. This also happens when an inkling overextends and tries to take out one too many opponents on their own. Keep to your own ink since it's the safest. You have key positions, but there is also relative positioning. For example, an offensive and support player may find themselves in the same area and can work together to choke enemies in a location, with the offensive taking the straight route and the support taking the adjacent route, meaning to ambush enemies as they close into the same position. You want to fluidly move relative to your teammates, pushing to key positions as the opposing team loses firefights. This way, you can assure to maintain stage control. You can also strengthen stage control by inking turf, which hinders pathways to the opposing team, leading to a delay in enemy pushes. Teams should also call out covering key positions to prevent any flanks or sieges. In pushes, organize the points of attack, which does not mean everyone takes an individual path, but more so to limit your opposing team's options and spread their defenses. If a Rainmaker is pushing up on one side and there are four enemies waiting for it, it's detrimental to your objective. Consider instead having a teammate deter one or two of the enemy team's attention away from the objective. That's all for today, squids. Hope this helped those new squads out there. And if you have a squad, let us know your squad name. Stay fresh!